Amen, amen. Good morning. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Happy to be in the house this morning, everybody. Isn't God good? Amen. Amen. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is uh, David Mendoza. I am the campus pastor here at the TFC Westlake campus. Absolute pleasure to be with you guys once again. And before I start with today's sermon, I do want to go ahead and welcome those who are joining us via our Facebook feed as well. Let's give it up for those as well, individuals who are watching us from home. We love you guys. Thank you for stopping by as well. And today I'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit on a topic that I kind of started last week. I'm excited to see so many faces, so many fresh faces on this beautiful Sunday morning. I know some of our winter Texans were back. Let's give it up for them as well. Amen. Winter Texans. Amen. We love it when our family comes home, right, to Texas. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you know, I'm excited for it because I know that God has a word to share with us. It's not part of any series. I started the conversation last week. I didn't intend to make it more than one week. But uh, with a show of hands, how many of you guys were here last week? All right, pretty good. Oh, a lot of you guys. All right, praise God. Yeah, we talked about the Good Shepherd, and, and there was a component of, you can always catch that online at a later time if you want, but there was a component of that message that was just kind of stirring in my heart throughout the week that I wanted to spend a little more time on, and that part was hearing the voice of God. <laughs> hearing the voice of God. We talked a lot about how we are not a people who are leading ourselves. We're not chasing after fulfilling our life. We're sheep with a shepherd. And because we have a shepherd, there is a voice of authority and there's a voice that guides us in our life. We don't just do our own thing, right? We don't look for our own heart and our own desires to lead us the way. We look for the voice of God, amen? Uh, that's our shepherd. So I wanted to kind of expand on that a little bit today. Let me give you the scripture that I used last week. It was in John 10. I'll only give you a couple of verses from it. John 10 verse 3 says this, The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him because they know his voice. That's the key right there. They know the voice of God. In today's sermon, I'm entitling, Hearing the Voice of God. Hearing the Voice of God. Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we thank you once again for the opportunity to be here today. Father, we thank you for this time and fellowship and friendship and community. Father, over these next few moments that we're about to share together, Father, I pray that you just speak life into this moment, that we have soft hearts, pliable spirits to receive your word, to be transformed by it. Father, I thank you for this congregation here present. I thank you for those who are joining us online. Thank you for their heart to seek after you, Father, and I just pray that you continue to do your work in their life because you love them and you love us, Father. We love you for who you are. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. So how many of you guys know what Morse code is? Morse code, show of hands, everybody, Morse code. Uh, if you don't know what Morse, Morse code is, uh, it's a pretty, it's, it's a little bit of the telegraph. Anybody know what telegraph is? Some people are like, yes, I know exactly what that is. Not everybody, some young people, especially the young ones are like, what's that, right? Uh, a telegraph is basically a way that we would communicate in the past. It was the way to transverse large distances. You couldn't, but this was before the iPhone, guys. <laughs> this was before the iPhone and before the internet that we have now. And Morse code was used to transmit messages across vast spaces. If you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, maybe you've seen a movie. I'm going to play a sound for you. You've heard it in a movie and maybe you've seen it. This is what it sounded like. Here we go. You ever heard that before? Especially like an old war movie? The Americans have landed, that kind of thing, and you know. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a code. It was like a little beep, 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 and, and you would spell out words. If you were in trouble, you would do an SOS, and people could hear it. And, and the reason why I wanted to share that was because I came across a story this week that I'd heard in the past. I thought it was pretty interesting about a young guy who uh, was applying for a job. And he was applying for a job back in the day of the telegraph, of the telegram. Back in those days, that's when he was applying for it. And he was applying for the job of Morse code operator. So he gets there. He saw in the, in the papers that they were hiring somebody to do this. And he gets there. And when he gets there, there's a bunch of other people sitting there, like maybe seven to ten other applicants, right? His competition. <laughs> and when he gets there, there's just a sign on the door or on the desk that says, if you're here for the position, fill out the application, sit down, and wait to be called. <laughs> So he's like, all right. So he gets, he gets the application and he starts filling it out. He sits down, fills it all out, fills out the, his name and his address, all that good stuff. And he's waiting there and he starts looking around at the guys who are there. Very busy office with a lot of activity. Uh, he starts looking at the guys and he just kind of like, just gets up and walks into the office. Uh, he, he doesn't wait. He walks in uh, and the other guys are looking at each other like, what's up with this guy? He just got here, right? That kind of thing. Uh, a few minutes later, you hear him talking to the manager and he walks out with the manager. <laughs> The manager and the guy walk out, and the manager's like, all right, guys, gentlemen who are here, those seven to ten who are waiting for the interview, uh, unfortunately, the position has already been filled. It's been filled by this guy. 
And the other ones were like, scandal, right? Because he got here after us. Like, this is scandalous, you know? What do you mean? This is an outrage. We were here before him. How could he get seen before us? What was actually happening was that they were all waiting there in this busy office, and that code that I just transmitted to you was being played in the background. And and the message that that, that was being transmitted in the background was this. If you understand this message, come right in. The job is yours. (laughs) Isn't that interesting? Praise God, right? (laughs) Uh, random illustration but I wanted to use that as a way of telling you it's not that God's not talking to us it's that we're not hearing he is speaking right so if you're in the house today and you're saying I don't I'm waiting then let's talk about why we're not hearing because he is speaking and how many of you guys know he doesn't stop speaking His voice is alive. His voice is active. When his voice speaks, creation occurs. He is just a God who is constantly speaking into your life, into my life. It's a matter of us whether or not we're listening or not. Uh, So if you're here today, I used to get this this question all the time when I was in the young adults group. Any young adults in the house today? One or two of them. Amen. Praise God. (laughs) You're like, I consider myself young, right? That kind of thing. Uh, when I was in charge of the young adults group, one of the questions that I would always get was this question. How do you know it's the voice of God? How do you know if I'm hearing from God? How do you know if it's, if, if it's, not, if it's, just, if it's God or if it's last night's tacos? That kind of thing. Uh, we don't know, right? So we, that's a big, important question. And for us, I just wanted to spend some time on it. We're, kind of be practical. Uh, very simple. Like, I don't think I'm going to do anything too crazy today, like where you guys are going to walk out with, you know, with your... Uh, theological minds blown, you know, I think, you, I think it's basic things, but at the same time, they're so basic, sometimes we just overlook them. And, and I feel I want to share a little bit about that. So what I'm going to do is, like I said, we have the voice of our good shepherd in our life. I'm going to expand on that a little bit, and I'm going to give you three basic things that we can do. Three things. One of them might not be applied to everybody in this room, but three things that we have to do to be able to hear the voice of God, because he's not silent, he's talking. And just like the job applicant, it's a matter of us listening. So uh, let me give you a couple of points. Let me give you a scripture first before I give you the first point. Let's go with me to Acts 17. Acts 17, verse 26 and 27. This is Paul, the Apostle Paul. You know who that is, very famous uh, figure in the Bible. He's in Greece, and he says this in Greece and Athens, as a matter of fact. He says, from one man he created all the nations throughout the whole earth. He's talking about Adam. He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall, and he determined their boundaries. His purpose was for the nations, I want you to pay attention to this last part, his purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way towards him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. Verse 30, God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier times. But now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him. For he has set a day for judging the entire world. And that includes Westlake, in case you forgot, Westlake was part of the world. (laughs) With justice by the man he has appointed. There he's not talking about Adam anymore. Now he's talking about Jesus. For he has set a day for judging the world with justice by the man he has appointed. And he has proved to everyone who this is by raising him from the dead. Paul goes to Athens where people are worshiping all sorts of gods, and he starts talking to them, and he says, you know, uh, you guys don't know the true God per se, but the time is coming where we can't get away with that ignorance. That's what he was telling them. The time is gone already, as a matter of fact, in, in those days. You know, back, the Lord created everything through Adam, but he also made Jesus, and because of Jesus, he didn't make Jesus, but because of Jesus' sacrifice, Uh, He's going to judge the world by Jesus. So it's important. We have to make a decision of what we're going to do with Jesus. He's in Athens telling these guys, you have to make a decision about what you're going to do with Jesus. What does it have to do with any of this? This is very important because a lot of people here, and maybe this doesn't apply to you, and if it doesn't, cool. But if it does, I want you to pay attention. You want to hear the voice of God, but you haven't accepted Jesus. That's important, right? Anybody in the house with me today? Uh, yeah, it's important. Like, so we have to accept Jesus Christ, number one. Uh, the reason I shared that verse, I, I thought it was interesting because Paul says, you know, if you, just, if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life and you're here today, we love that you're here. This isn't like a club thing, like we're better than you or not. This is just a matter of time because Jesus is after your heart as well. Okay? So it's nothing to do with being better or not. But if you're hearing the sound of my voice, whether online or in person, and you've never accepted Jesus Christ before, let me tell you something. You can hear the voice of God and you can see the voice of God simply by being alive in this world. Right? 
Uh, you wake up in the morning, all of a sudden the, the, the light shines the right way. Your spouse wakes up and just kind of turns her hair like this and does this. And you're like, oh, praise him, right? That kind of thing. And you do, there's something in you that is just wired to know that this world was created. Uh, he said it there. This world was meant for us to follow and feel our way towards him. That's what Paul was saying to the people of Athens that didn't know who Jesus was. Uh, if you just live... Live long enough, and something within you will want to feel its way towards its creator. That's just the way it is. That's the way the world is designed. The Bible talks about that. The mountains, the sky, the way the world is wired. I mean, yeah, there's some bad stuff in this world, but if you subtract some of the noise and you pay attention to some of the beauty, it points to something, and it points to a creator. So if you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ, you might have had encounters with God and his voice by his creation, But the reason why I wanted to start here is because we can't say we're hearing the voice of the shepherd, a.k.a. Jesus Christ, if you're not one of his sheep. Amen? So I'm actually, if you're here today and you're saying, well, this is offensive, David. I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm trying to be truthful. And you might hear some things of this world, and you might hear a certain voice, and maybe there's a pull of your heart to hear, but you won't experience the active Morse code word of God in your life on a daily basis unless you come to faith in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ himself made a way for us. That's why the Bible says that all the time. Through Jesus Christ, through believing in him, now all of a sudden we have access to the throne of God. We have the Holy Spirit power in our lives to be able to tune in to the Morse code. And it's important, I, I, I won't spend a lot of time on it because this is a 10 a.m. service and there's Christians all over the place in here. <laughs> but I will say it to you if you're, not, if you're here, maybe this is something you need to, you need to think about. If, you're not, if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're experiencing a certain exposure to God, but you're not experiencing the connection that Jesus Christ bridged for you through his death and sacrifice on the cross. You're not hearing him as clearly as you should be. So if you're here today and you, and you have that question, well, how do I know? How do I hear? How do I? I've, I've, I've tried to hear him before, but da 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 and, and this isn't a, a negative thing, but I want to be clear. If that's you, you have to start with step one. You have to accept Jesus Christ. Uh, don't do so because I said so in this moment, but it's almost like, okay, if you want to wrestle with that, you want to chew that over a little bit, then that's important. That's okay. Take the time you need. But how many of you guys can testify the Christians in the room today accepting Jesus Christ is step number one? <laughs> how many of you guys can testify to that? It's step number one. You allow him into your life. It doesn't make you perfect. Listen to me. It doesn't make you perfect. As a matter of fact, this is the opposite. It's because you're imperfect that you need it. Once you have Jesus Christ in your life, you've accepted him, you have access to the throne of God, you have the Holy Spirit power in your life to hear his voice on a daily basis. That's number one. Pretty straightforward, not a complicated point. Like I said, I'm not keeping it too too complex today. Uh, Let's go to the next one. This one's a little more complicated. Uh, Number one, you've got to accept Jesus Christ. How do we hear the voice of God? David, accept Jesus Christ. Number two, you have to lower the noise. Does anybody give me an amen on that? Let me talk to you about a time long past. Uh, A a magical time, a glorious time that we all refer to as the 90s. (laughs) How many of you guys remember the 90s? 90s? What were you thinking with that close? Right? The 90s, 80s. 80s and 90s. I'm going to do the 90s, but the 90s is kind of a, a, a middle, so I think we can all remember the 90s. Those of you who were alive in the 90s and were a little bit older in the 90s, do you remember what it was like to live in the 90s? Do you remember what we had to do to live in the 90s? Was it like it is now? It is not like it is now. (laughs) Uh, It it was a crazy world then too. This nonsense of like, oh, it was better in our time. No, it wasn't. Like, it was crazy also, but we had different things, right? We didn't have per se, oh, I don't know, the internet. (laughs) We didn't have the internet like we do now. Smartphones weren't a thing. You remember that? Anybody in the house today, I lose everybody. You remember this? Everybody, come on, help me out here. You remember what it was like at life before smartphones? I know, it seems like a long time ago. It was a magical time in the 90s, right? You, 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 made, up a, 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 you made a reservation to have dinner with somebody. You'd be like, hey, you want to have dinner with me? Yeah, let's do it. I'll see you at Taco Palenque. Was there a Taco Palenque? I don't know. I'll see you at Ciro's. West Taco people? No, nobody else? All right. <laughs> Insert your favorite restaurant there, right? Or whatever, I don't know. I'll see you at Ciro's. And you're like, all right, when? Friday. Friday at what time? Six. Okay, be there, right? All right, cool. You set up an appointment. Uh, this is the 90s, remember. I want you to remember what this felt like. You get there, and they're not there. You get there, and you're like, okay, this is going to blow some of you younger people's minds. 
What can you do about that? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> you can't do anything about that. You can't say, hey, where you at? <laughs> where you at? No, you can't do that either. If there's a payphone, maybe you can get a payphone, hoping that they're still at, at home, right? But let's say there's no payphone. What can you do about it? You're there at six. This is a forbidden word, forbidden four-letter word in the world that we live in nowadays. Wait. <laughs> <gasps> me? Wait? You waited. You walked in and you just... <laughs> Sit down. And, and then what did you do when you waited? Did you check your Facebook status? Did you get on Insta? What did you do? <laughs> you did nothing. Amen. Like she got it. <laughs> you didn't do anything. There wasn't the amount of noise. You sat down and you waited. If you were lucky, there was a newspaper nearby. You remember newspapers? You remember that? And you just waited. You read, you waited. This is important. Again, the 90s weren't more magical than they were now. They were fun. They were fun. You had to think for yourself. You had to just wait. You were, listen to this, open vessel. There wasn't noise constantly filling your head. Let's do an exercise. All right, I have here a timer. I'm going to put this timer to 30 minutes, or you want to do it 30 seconds? Or, no, not 30 minutes. 30 seconds or a minute. All right, here we go. It's 30 seconds. Okay? We're all going to embrace silence together. Don't do anything. <sighs> no, wait, can you breathe? Wait, listen. Let's be really honest with ourselves, okay? And you don't have to answer aloud. How many of you wanted to grab your phone? If I, was, if I was up, you guys were at least looking at me. If I had just gone off the stage, how many of you guys would have just, maybe not now, but this has happened to you. You're just there and just, you're just like there and talking, you're just like, somebody's talking to you? My wife hates it, right? So you hate it. I'm like, so put the phone down, look at me, please. You want me to look at you the whole time? Yes, I do want you to look at me the whole time, yes. <laughs> okay, let me, let's get real. For some of you, that was the most silence you've had all week. If I would have done a minute, that you, trust me, after a minute, it gets really uncomfortable. I used to have a trick when I used to do young groups, uh, young, young small adults. And if you're a small, small group leader in the room, th this is for you. Small group leaders in the room. Amen, amen. Small groups, all right. If you're a small group leader and you, you facilitate a small group, this one's for you. Ask a question and just power through a minute of silence. Somebody will speak up because it's just so awkward. <laughs> just don't do anything. Just say, what does the Bible say about this? And then don't talk for a minute. Somebody will just giggle or laugh or something because the, 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 the silence is so awkward. And I'm trying to draw attention to something that we're guilty of. I'm guilty of, you're guilty of. We want God to talk. We want to hear him. But there is so much noise in your life. So much. Uh, what was the first voice, the very first voice in, that spoke into your life this morning? You don't have to answer it loud. Just think it through. What was the first thing you did in the morning? The first thing you reached for? This is what this means. If you were, if, 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 this is where I'm going with this. If, you're, if I'm hitting you, the first thing you reached for this morning was your phone. 
And the first voice that spoke into your life when you popped open your eyes wasn't even the voice of God. It wasn't even the voice of your husband or spouse. It wasn't even the voice of your kids. It was the voice of some random news feed. It could have been bad news. It could have been good news. It could have been FOMO. You've been like, yeah, they were partying last night. Nambe? <laughs> FOMO is fear of missing out, by the way. You're like, what do you say? <laughs> uh, it could have been a, a, a variety of voices, but here's what I'm trying to draw attention to. We want to hear God, but who's speaking the most into you? Lowering the noise is very important. Do you think I'm lying? It's actually biblical. You know what Jesus did when he needed to hear from God sometimes? This is Jesus. He has 12 guys with him all the time. What did he do? Does that, you, know, you know what I'm going to say. What did he do? They're like, hey, yeah, we're going to get something. We're going to go to HB. We're going to go to studios. Right, right Jesus? <laughs> he already went up the hill to be alone in front of God, to hear the voice of God. Jesus did it. We all know the story of Mary and Martha. Martha was the, Mary was the busy one. Martha was the one that was sitting at the feet of Jesus, not on her phone. <laughs> uh, Elijah looks after, wants to hear the voice of God. He goes up a mountain, and there's fire, and there's earthquakes, and there, everything, all this happens. And where does he hear him? Those of you who are Christians in the room. The prophet Elijah goes up a mountain, the mountain shakes, an earthquake comes, the fire comes, all this noise is there. And then where does he actually hear him? He hears him in a whisper. Uh, we have to accept Jesus Christ into our life. Number two, we have to lower the noise. This, this, this is what I'm going to put on my pastor hat, right? As a pastor and as a friend, guys, listen to me. For some reason, social media and what we do on our phones is such a touchy subject with everybody. I've seen it in our congregation and in my family everywhere. The moment you tell anybody, like, can you get off your phone, please? It's an offense. Anybody? That, there's laughter, right? Because you know what I'm talking about. Can you just get off the phone, please? Ah, I'm trying to relax. <laughs> Can you just leave me alone, please? I'm trying to relax by paying attention to people's lives who I don't know. They don't feed me anything. I don't feed them anything, but I want to know what they're doing. <laughs> it doesn't apply to everybody, but here's something that we had in the 90s that we don't have anymore, and, I'm, and, I, and I've had to... If I want to get super spiritual with you guys, I've had to make it a practice, a spiritual discipline. I'm going to go that path. A spiritual discipline that I've had to uh, curate in my life and formulate in my life is this discipline. Just being quiet. Amen. Quiet. Uh, I'll give you a tip. Get one of these timers like mine. This doesn't work with any other relationship, by the way. I can't do this with my wife. Okay, you have 30 minutes. Go. Right? It doesn't work. But... <laughs> But if you're in a place where you can't find that, I just can't be still, David. I can't. Like every time I sit down. And this is what happens. Right now for those 30 seconds, if I go longer, you just, and, and stuff will drop into the bucket. Oh, I have to go to the grocery store. Or I have to do this. Or I have to do that. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It happens when we try to pray too. Anybody try to pray for longer than five minutes? Oh, I have to. All of a sudden we remember, I think there's a leak in the garage. And, you know, we have to all these. I think I lost my shoes in 1979. And <laughs> everything goes into that void. That, there's a reason for that. Uh, if you have to get a timer, this is how I started, and I'll share it with you. When, when, I, when I was too busy and I was like, Lord, 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 like, I, I just felt like a hand, like, calm down, just be still. Okay, I, so I would put a timer like for 30 minutes, 45 minutes in my office, in my study. I would just put it on, put it, and just blip, hit it, and then I would not touch my phone. I would not get on the computer. I would close the computer. I would just sit there. And you're thinking, doing what? That word, right? Four-letter word. Nobody likes it. I waited Uh, Psalm 62, Psalm 62, verse 5 through 8, let all that I am, no, Jesus will yell at me, no, he won't, <laughs> let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in him, he alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will not be shaken, my victory and honor come from God alone, he is my refuge, a rock, where no enemy can reach me. Oh, my people, trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. All right, church? Uh, we, we are people who are led, but today I'm going to move on. Uh, we are people who know how to wait. I don't know what that means for you. I think it's a loaded lesson. I might have to do a, a longer talk on this later. But uh, have that conversation with yourself. Uh, what does it mean for you to wait? What does it mean for you to be silent? 
uh, for five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes a day, 15 minutes, whatever it takes to connect with your Lord and Savior, I leave that on to you for homework. Go with me to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 7. I'm going to give you the last one. Verse 3 in 1 Timothy 1, as I urged you, this is Paul talking to his protege, Timothy, as I urged you when I left for Macedonia, I'm asking that you remain in Ephesus to instruct them not to teach or follow the error of deceptive doctrines, not to teach or follow the error of deceptive doctrines, nor pay any attention to cultural myths, come on somebody, traditions or the endless study of genealogies. Those digressions only breed controversies and debates. They are devoid of power that builds up and strengthens the church and the faith of God. For we reach the goal of fulfilling all the commandments when we love others deeply with a pure heart, a clean conscience, and sincere faith. Some believers have been led astray by teachings and speculations that emphasize nothing more than, empty, than the empty words of men. They presume to be expert teachers of the law, but they, have, they don't have the slightest idea what they're talking about. <laughs> And they simply love to argue. Somebody give me an amen on that one. Our, our, our faith is basic. It said it in verse 5. For we reach the goal of fulfilling all the commandments when we love others deeply with a pure heart, a clear conscience, and sincere faith. If we love others with a pure heart, sincere conscience, and sincere faith, we're fulfilling the commandments of God. Yet there's a lot of noise and a lot of weird things in our life that can pull us another way. And a lot of those things don't know what they're talking about. Here's the third one. To know and to hear the voice of God, not only do we have to accept Jesus, we have to lower the noise. We also have to be careful of a bunch of other voices that are around us. I've been talking about this these last few weeks. I talked about traditions and commandments. How many of you guys are here for that one? Uh, I've been talking about this one. Uh, there's a lot of voices that are looking to kind of deviate us. And here's the thing that I want to encourage you on. To hear the voice of God, because he's talking all the time, we lower the noise. But we also have to study the real voice of God. <laughs> okay, this is important, to study the real uh, because there's lots of noise. Not only when you lower the noise, there's also a lot of teaching. How many of you guys know there's a big red fire alarm going off in the New Testament? Uh, Matthew forward, when Jesus Christ, the four Gospels forward, the letters of Paul. There's a big massive fire alarm in every single letter that you read from Paul. I'm not sure if you've ever noticed it before. Sometimes we go in there and we just kind of want to hear it for ourselves. So we don't pay attention to what he's saying in, as a big picture. There's a big fire alarm and here's the big fire alarm. There's a bunch of people talking a bunch of nonsense <laughs> that's false teaching. And it's pulling you away from God over and over again. Watch out for the false doctrine. Watch out for the false doctrine. Timothy, I left you so you can protect them against false doctrine. Watch out for the wolf. It constantly, over and over in Scripture, it talks about how there's voices in our culture, not only in biblical times, even now, that are looking to pull you away from God's truth. And those voices, just like the noise in your life, is looking to sway you into that. Now, we, I don't want to put a face to it because you might think, well, who is that person? I'll just stop following that person on social media, that kind of thing. I don't want, it's not necessarily a face. It's just these doctrines that just kind of float around. There's people who are just kind of thinking the wrong thing, saying the wrong thing, and all this. And, and when you want to hear the voice of God, you, you'll start hearing them, especially when it comes to matters of faith. Well, if you're going to be a believer, you should have this. And that's what I talked about traditions recently. And it looks like faith, but it's not really faith. So how do we know the difference? Uh, when, when, you, when you start working at a bank, any bankers in the room? Bankers? All right, cool. Uh, nobody. They've all been replaced by machines. <laughs> the future is nigh, guys. The future is nigh, right? Uh, okay, yeah, some bankers in the room. It used to be the case. I don't know if they still do this. Uh, to spot a fake bill. They wouldn't train you how to spot a fake one. They would train you how to see a real one. It's the opposite. Uh, so how, to make sure that you don't get fooled into grabbing some fake Benjamins, they gave you a real one, and they would say, look, make sure you hold it up to the light, and you can see the, the watermark, and you can see this, and, you, and, they, and they would feel it. Like, okay, this is a real one. This is, and, and they would spend time looking at it. Okay, this is, and get familiar with the bill. They probably couldn't take it home. <laughs> But they had to look at it and just like, you know, know it. And then they'd be doing their thing and, and they, they would say, it'll be this much. Okay, let me get you. And they go, so I'm going to make this deposit. Okay, how much is it? For, for, for. It was a feel. Amen? It was a feel. They could feel the fake because they spent time in the real. How do we watch out for false doctrines, things that are just going to drive you away from God, things that don't build your faith up, don't lead you into sincere faith, brotherly love and affection? Like, like Paul, how do we know? 
Uh, you got to spend time in the real. The more time you spend in the real word of God, the more you'll just be able to isolate it. You won't even try. It'll just be obvious. Anybody ever, has ever, ever happened to anybody before? Uh, especially, like, this happened to me a lot as a, as a pastor and even in my, in my youth. I hear stories of people coming to me and telling me, hey, David, uh, and just things that seem weird. You know, their faith, people, I'm like, hey, well, I remember, I, I shared this one before, but I'll share it again because this kind of makes sense. Um, there was a, a young man that I knew, not a young man, kind of older guy, who I wanted to go to church. I'm like, hey, you know, you should come to church. This was before TFC Westlake Spanish. He was a Spanish speaker. He lives in my calendar. So I said, hey, you should go to church. He's like, I already have a church. I'm like, oh, great. Do you join the church? He's like, yeah, yeah, I, I try to go. Like, well, we have a Spanish congregation if you want to stop by. He's like, no, I go to church and I do my best. But, man, you know, I'm just tired of that place. I get really tired of it. I'm like, why? He's like, the pastor. The pastor, like, he, he gets on my nerves. I'm like, <laughs> what? The pastor? He's like, yeah, yeah. The, the pastor has a certain congregation that he has. And this is going to be kind of tricky, but I'm going to say it. Uh, this certain congregation that he has that he expects to give an offering and a tithe, just like we, we offer the opportunity to give offering and tithe. You know, it's part of our, our faith, part of the way we serve. So he would do that, but what he would do, he would go the extra step. He knew certain families were part of the church, and if they didn't come, he would uh, create receivables. <laughs> I'm not making this up. He would create arrears. Okay, you didn't make it on this Sunday or that Sunday or this Sunday, and he would actually present bills. Okay, like that's... <laughs> Can you imagine that? I'm, I'm at the door. <laughs> hey, 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 pe, pe, pe. <laughs> hey, no, no, duck, right? Get him, right? Security, get, get He's trying to run. <laughs> no, listen. <laughs> no, listen, that sounds, uh, I laugh. But when he told me that, it's like I was counting bills. Oh, you go to church? Yeah, they bless your family? Okay, but they bill me for it. Not true. It's good that you give, but you tell me that you haven't been there in six months, and when you get there, there's a bill waiting for you. It's like, yeah, I'm there's a three month one waiting for me right now at the church. I just haven't gone back. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, that's obvious to everybody. But let me tell you, it's so refined the Word of God that the more you get into it, a family member can just speak a random thing to you. Why do you go to this? And they'll say something, and you'll be like, listening. That doesn't sound right because you spend a lot of time around the real. And, and, and the reason why I share that, guys, is because I find that sometimes we get lazy in our faith. Uh, I've, I've been on this bend. I'm not sure if you've noticed. I've been on this bend of just kind of like I'm doing my best to teach and just kind of lead the congregation in a certain way. And, and it, can be, it, can be, it can come off as exhortation. But, you know, it is an exhortation. i got to be honest. We can get lazy in our faith. And we don't want to look at the real. Come on. We want somebody to tell us what they've done. So, what, what, mom, why do we always do this? Well, we do because of this. Okay, then I'll do it too. I talked about that in commandments or traditions. Uh, I'll do it too then. Why do you do that? And, and you can see it when you talk to people. Just, why do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> We've always done it this way. And they never actually took that and ran it by the real. So the laziness sometimes in our own faith, and I, I used to be this way, so it's not a judgment. Trust me, like, I've been there. The laziness is that we don't want to open the word for ourselves. Like, why would we do that? That's a complicated book. We don't want to read, right? I'm not a reader, David. I get that one. I'm not really a reader, David. I don't want to read. Well, isn't it funny that the, the, heaven of all the Lord of all creation gave us his word written? So who's supposed to adjust? Or you can listen to it, same thing. Listen to it. But the idea is the same. Uh, we have to ingest the word of God. We have to spend time in the real. And as we do so, trust me, the fake bills will pop. I want to hear the voice of God? Yes, so do I. I want you to hear the voice of God too. The actual one. <laughs> Not the echoes of family or tradition or the culture that we live in. <laughs> the actual voice of God. Got quiet in here. Let me give you one more. John 10, 5. And this is what's at stake. John 10, 5. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't... See, they know one voice and they know the real one. They don't know the other one, so they won't follow that one. I touched a little bit on this last week. And then as I was finishing my study, and with this verse I'm going to finish, I'm going to pray with you guys. As I was finishing my study, I was reminded of Matthew 23. 
Because this is what I think sometimes when we're not looking for the right thing. This is what Jesus said in Matthew 23. Oh, TFC Westico. That's the way I read it. <laughs> oh, TFC Westico. Oh, TFC Westico. The city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers. How often have I wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings? But you wouldn't. And now look, your house is abandoned and desolate. For some reason, that, that scripture just bounced at me at the end of my study time, and I thought, you know, this isn't about me like condemning. This isn't about me glorifying the 90s. <laughs> this is about me trying to transmit the, the word of God and the heart of God. Oh, T.C. Westlake, oh, how our Savior longs to gather you and your entire family under his protection. His heart is for it. I, oh, man, I wish the Mendoza and the Garcia's. I wish I could just wrap my arms around them and protect them. Wrap my arms around them and cover them. That's the heart of our Father. But is it Him that's backing out? He said, oh, but I would do that, but you won't let me. That's the exhortation. Sometimes we don't let Him because we're not hearing. We're like that guy at the job application process, just sitting there waiting for it to be called by God. We're sitting there. Someday the Lord will organize my life. Someday the Lord will, will reach my children. Someday the Lord will. Someday the Lord will. And the whole time the message is being transmitted. <laughs> I love you now. Not someday. Now. I want your children under protection. Now. I want your family covered by my wings. Now. I want your salvation. Now. <laughs> Not someday. But it requires us to be able to hear the voice of God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm going to pray for you today, church. Pretty straightforward lesson, like I said. But right there as you spend these next, let's do that. I'm going to help you today. I'm going to do another 30 seconds. Let's allow God 30 seconds to speak into the word that was just shared this moment. Remember, it's accepting Jesus Christ, it's lowering the noise, and it's studying the real. Thank you for this opportunity, Father, once again on this beautiful Sunday morning to have the privilege and the pleasure of just being able to hear your voice, Father. Father, I thank you for the word that you're speaking over our lives as a whole, that it not come off as condemnation or guilt, but that it flow from the heart of the Father as a reminder. He's after our hearts. He's after our ears. He's after our being because he loves us. Father, I pray that you forgive us if our lives have become so noisy. <laughs> aware of what's happening on the other side of the world, but not aware of what's happening in the life of our neighbor. Aware of where everybody's on the weekend, but not aware of where our heart is in this moment. So Father God, I thank you, Father, for the opportunity to just spend time in reflection and under your word. Father, we long as a congregation to hear more of your voice. Father God, guide us as a body to hear you, to know what volume, to, what volume knob to move in our life, if it means subtraction of relationships, if it means subtraction of technology. In the name of Jesus, we embrace it. No longer kicking against it, no longer getting defensive, but choosing to make a decision. At this moment, I do want to give an opportunity for anybody in the house today who whose ears perked up in point number one where I talked about Jesus Christ and I said we have to accept Jesus Christ. Maybe you're here in the room today and you've never made that decision for yourself. You've never accepted him as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you're online. Maybe, you're, maybe at one point you did, but you walked away and the voice of God has grown distant from you. Not because he's far, but because you're far. If you feel the need to make that decision for the first time today or to come back into the fold, to come back into his grace and make a recommitment to follow him. If you're here in the house today, can you raise your hand for me nice and high for me to see you right where you are. Sister, I see you right here in the aisle. Sister, I see you in the back. 
Anybody else nice and high for me to see? Praise God, nice and high. Brother, I see you. More importantly, God sees these hands. Sir, I see you on the left as well. God bless you, sir. Anybody else in the house online as well? I see you, sister. Okay, you can put your hands down, congregation. Those of you who raise your hand, I want to pray a prayer with you. It's a very special prayer because it's giving voice to what's happening in your heart. The Bible says that we believe in our heart and we confess with our lips. That's what leads us to salvation. It's a blessed, beautiful gift that is so simple to access, but it requires our heart to pray it. So at this moment, I'm going to pray with you. And as I pray, I pray that you follow this, you, that you follow this prayer with your own words, that you follow my voice. You repeat after me with your own voice, with your own heart. Everybody in the congregation, I want you to pray nice and loud with me so that nobody prays alone online as well. Father God, I thank you for your son, Jesus. I thank you that he died for me. At this moment, I ask that you come into my heart and that you save me. Wash all my sins away. Make me brand new. I receive you as my Lord and Savior in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that because of my confession, I am forgiven. You live in me and heaven is my eternal home. I am saved in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus we pray, church. Isn't God faithful? Amen. Give it up for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen.